so let's go over the various relationships now the first one is covered interest rate parity this is something we've seen before and covered interest rate parity is reflected by this relationship an investment in a foreign money market instrument that is completely hedged against exchange rate risk should yield exactly the same return as an otherwise identical domestic money market investment now let's say we have a u.s investor who has bought german bonds denominated in the euro and the u.s investor has hedged his position in the euro using forward contracts in that case the return for the u.s investor will be identical to the domestic money market return and that is because the currency risk has been totally hedged away using forward contracts also arbitrage ensures that covered interest rate parity holds uncovered interest rate parity according to this relationship the expected return on an uncovered or an unhedged foreign currency investment should equal the return on a comparable domestic currency investment the key difference between uncovered interest rate parity and covered interest rate parity is that with uncovered interest rate parity we are talking about an expected return whereas with covered interest rate parity we come up with a precise forward rate according to uncovered interest rate parity the change in the spot rate over the investment horizon should on average equal the differential in interest rates between the two countries in other words expected appreciation or depreciation of the exchange rate will just offset the yield differential to illustrate this through a simple example let's say the spot rate for pkr to usd is 100 and the interest rate in the price currency which is pkr is 8% the interest rate in the base currency which is usd is 2% then according to uncovered interest rate parity the expected percentage change in the spot rate is equal to the interest rate in the price currency minus the interest rate in the base currency this differential is 8% minus 2% which is 6% so according to uncovered interest rate parity we will expect a 6% change in the spot rate over a one year period and one year period because these rates are one year rates there is no arbitrage relationship which forces uncovered interest rate parity to hold so this prediction that the exchange rate will change by 6% is only a prediction it is what we expect to happen over a one year period there is no guarantee that the spot rate will indeed change by 6% forward rate parity according to this relationship the forward exchange rate is an unbiased forecast of the future spot exchange rate if both covered and uncovered interest rate parity hold so if both these relationships hold then the forward exchange rate is equal to the expected spot rate so we can also say then that the expected spot rate is equal to the spot rate times 1 plus interest rate in the price currency over 1 plus interest rate in the base currency and then we can do the same thing that we do with forward rates if we have something other than one year then we do n over 360 and n over 360 so if forward rate parity holds then the expected spot rate is equal to the forward price what follows from this statement is the following if uncovered interest rate parity holds then forward rate parity holds however uncovered interest rate parity relationship is not enforced by arbitrage and it also assumes that investors are risk neutral which is not necessarily the case and because of this uncovered interest rate parity is often violated and therefore the forward rate is a poor predictor of 
expected spot rate. Now, there is a larger point here. We have parity relationships, which are basically models. These models make predictions, but the models are not necessarily perfect. These are the issues with the forward rate parity relationship or with this model. And therefore, the predictions made by this model are often not correct. From an exam perspective, however, you need to know what these relationships say. The ex ante version of PPP says that expected changes in the spot exchange rate are driven entirely by expected differences in national inflation rates. So the difference between the relative version and the ex ante version has to do with actual versus expected. The formula is almost exactly the same. The difference here is that we are using this expected term. So the expected change in spot rate is equal to the differential between the expected inflation rates. Over short time horizons, nominal exchange rate movements appear to be random. In other words, purchasing power parity does not appear to hold in the short run. However, over longer time horizons, nominal exchange rates tend to gravitate toward their long run PPP equilibrium values. Next, we come to the international Fisher effect. A related concept here is real interest rate parity. According to this relationship, if uncovered interest rate parity and ex ante purchasing power parity hold, the real interest rate in the domestic country is equal to the real interest rate in the foreign country. So in other words, the real interest rate is the same across different countries. The international Fisher effect says that if real interest rate parity holds, in other words, we have the same real interest rates across countries, the foreign domestic nominal yield spread, which is the differential in interest rates, is determined solely by the foreign domestic expected inflation differential. So this relationship holds. The difference between interest rates is equal to the difference between inflation rates. And you need to remember that for this to be true, real interest rate parity needs to hold. And for real interest rate parity to hold, both uncovered interest rate parity and ex ante PPP need to hold. An assumption here is that the currency risk is the same throughout the world. In reality, this does not exist. Different currencies have different risk and therefore the international Fisher effect does not always hold.